In this video, we are going to be looking at how uh, an ore, a metal can be extracted from an ore and what an ore is and how only some metals can be extracted with, uh, by heating with carbon but not the others and we should be able to explain that in terms of reactivity series with the help of reactivity series and we should also be able to explain why this method only works for some metals and not the others okay when we say heating the metal ore with carbon we actually mean its oxides in the metal ores get purified and we end up with oxides such as I'll give you an example here uh, copper oxide and Fe2O3 which is iron oxide this lesson also focuses on extraction of copper from copper oxide so we'll be mainly focusing on copper extraction from copper oxide and how it is purified we can learn about extraction of iron from iron oxide in the next lesson in the series in iron and steel so iron and steel is for later we are focusing on copper oxide and connecting how the process works with uh, and explain the process with reactivity series an ore contains enough metal to make it economical to extract the metal here are some examples of uh, metal ores what you see here is copper ore and that's another copper uh, another type of copper ore and that's iron ore now all these are they look like they are rocks basically and it's a mixture of the compound of the metal that we are interested in with other substances sometimes it can be sand it can be other compounds other metal compounds it could be anything but it's mixed with this mixed with other substances but when we say economical it means to there is enough metal in there in each of these ores to give a profit to the company and to the people who are extracting the metal from the ore you will also come across terms such as high grade ore and a low grade ore so high grade ore contains uh, a lot of metal compounds and low grade ores contain small amount of um, the, the metal that you're interested in the metal compound that you're interested in however people may want to use low grade compound when you run out of the high grade ore because there is no choice and scientists will be looking at how to extract and make uh, use of the low grade ore to extract the metals that we are interested in and this is why what it means by the second statement these two statements are from the syllabus the economics of extraction may change over time what that means is people may start you know when this runs out people may start to use the low grade ore what you see here is the reactivity series this is given in the exam in the AQA syllabus uh, starting from potassium to platinum so this will be given in a separate sheet to you so you can refer to this in the exams and as you can see potassium is the most reactive of the elements that's listed here I say elements because some of them are not metals mostly metals what you see in italics here the hydrogen is a non-metal and carbon is a non-metal but carbon is such an important element for our for this lesson so have a look at this potassium sodium ca calcium magnesium aluminum and carbon is there and and anything below carbon can be extracted by um, heating the metal compound generally metal oxide very strongly with carbon and the method works because carbon is more reactive than some of the metals that you see here we're going to be particularly focusing on copper and iron they are below copper as you can see in the reactivity series so it should be possible to extract um, iron and copper by just heating the oxide of these metals with carbon very strongly um, you must have learned about displacement reactions I'm going to give you an example of what displacement reaction is it is a more reactive element takes the place of a less reactive element let's have a look at an example here is an example of an equation which shows how the displacement reaction works and it's really important for this uh, to understand extraction of uh, metals uh, by heating with carbon um, let's have a look at ions position in the reactivity series which is over here and it's well above copper which means iron is more reactive than copper so what that what happens in this reaction is an example this is a solution the aqueous mean it's a solution iron powder so if you add 
iron powder to an aqueous solution of copper sulfate what you get is the copper displaced uh, by the iron iron has taken the place of copper so copper is with the copper sulfate and copper has been kicked out by iron so consider this equation here will this work for copper oxide heating it strongly with carbon as you can see copper is uh, less reactive than carbon so that carbon should be able to take the place of copper and in fact it does and that's what we're going to be looking at in copper extraction in a bit more detail the question is if uh, I use the same process to extract aluminium from aluminium oxide aluminium is here just above carbon will the process work it will not because carbon is less reactive than aluminium so this method only works with anything any any metal which is below carbon here but we are going to be focusing on uh, just the copper extraction and iron extraction both below carbon have a look at gold uh, in the reactivity series it, it is right at the bottom of the series which means it's one of the least reactive elements and we know gold is a metal and it's very shiny and it just does not react with anything not even uh, not with oxygen not with any other element and that is that's what makes it uh, so good to make things like jewelry uh, that does not react with oxygen or any other gases in the air and become dull or discolored so gold is found as it is we call it as native element let's have a look at the brief process even before we go into the extraction first of all the ore is powdered and then the ore is concentrated what this means is lots of impurities which are present like this rocky substances and other waste substances are removed from the extraction site itself or close to the extraction site uh, and then transported to the extraction plant where the main chemical reaction takes place where the metal is actually actually extracted the reason is it reduces the cost so this process actually the concentration process is purifying the ore and making uh, and getting rid of all the impurities is to reduce the cost of transportation because you will be transporting less if you concentrate uh, the ore so by concentrating the ore you'll also be using less trucks to transport the ore to the extraction plant which means you will be using less fuel so it's really good for the environment as you'll be producing less polluting gases such as carbon dioxide this is just to give you an example of how the ore is concentrated you really need, don't need to know and be able to describe the whole process all you need to know is the ore gets more concentrated uh, which means by removing all the unnecessary waste uh, here is a tank where the air is getting bubbled through a pulp of the ore so the ore is powdered and mixed with water sometimes they mix it with other oil and air is bubbled through upward and the foam contains more compound of the metal that you're interested in and it floats on the surface which goes into the next container so what that means is all the waste stays in this tank so this is an example of how ores are concentrated you do not have to describe this in the exam it's just to give you an idea this shows what happens in the froth flotation process where we can see all the froth is on or all the bubbles are on floating on top which contains concentrated metal compounds now this can be scooped or it just flows into another tank and it saves a lot of time and transportation costs by doing so let's have a look at how copper is extracted from its high grade ores what that means is you have a high proportion high amount of uh, copper compounds in the in the ores so let's have a look at copper sulfide first how copper is extracted from it as you can see by simply getting rid of this sulfur you should be able to extract um, the copper that we need so the method just involves heating the ore copper sulfide very strongly in air which contains oxygen and you get copper which is what you want and plus sulfur dioxide gas which is something you don't want and it causes environmental problem we'll see that in a minute okay so by just heating it very strongly you get these two products this copper that we get by this method is not very pure we'll have to look at purification later on but for now just uh, understand that this copper extraction at this point 
we have impure copper over here. Okay, but the sulfur dioxide, there is a problem with this method, and this method is called smelting. And around 80% of copper is still extracted in this way. What's the problem with this method? Is the sulfur dioxide gas is not an environmentally friendly compound um, substance uh, or gas it goes into the clouds where there's water vapor now water vapor plus sulfur dioxide can produce sulfur uh, this, this goes into sulfur trioxide and then it produces sulfuric acid sulfuric acid comes down in the rain water as and we call that as acid rain and it can ca cause damage to marine um, living thing, marine organisms, and tree, tree roots and plants. Uh, it can also damage buildings. So it causes environmental issues, this method. But unfortunately, 80% of copper is still extracted by this method from um, copper-rich compound, which is copper sulfide, by just heating it and then purifying this impure copper. However, in extraction plants, normally they make use of the sulfur dioxide gas to make sulfuric acid so they pass this gas they're very careful with how much sulfur dioxide gets escape into the environment however some does but most of the sulfur dioxide is used to produce sulfuric acid which is another industrial product so it is not all bad most of the sulfur dioxide that is produced in this process goes into producing sulfuric sulfuric acid and then that becomes another useful product next we're going to be looking at how copper is extracted from copper carbonate. The first step to extract copper from copper carbonate or is just to heat it very strongly. You must have learned this in thermal decomposition les uh, lesson or the part of the syllabus where it deals with thermal decomposition of calcium carbonate limestone where any carbonate when heated strongly it splits into two substances. So in this case uh, the two substances are mainly one is oxide and the other one is carbon dioxide. This is a gas, that's a solid, and you start with a solid powder copper carbonate. And that's the first step in the extraction of copper carbonate. Heat it strongly to get copper oxide. Next step is straightforward. You take the copper oxide and heat it very strongly with carbon. Okay, as you can see here, copper oxide is heated strongly with carbon. Carbon being more reactive than copper, carbon takes the place of copper and the uh, copper is initially combined with oxygen you can see how copper has been displaced by carbon as you know that it is because carbon is more reactive than uh, copper so that is the react chemical reaction that happens when you extract copper from copper oxide remember this is an impure copper we further need to purify it does this cause less environmental problems yes it does cause some problems still Carbon dioxide is not as harmful as sulfur dioxide that is that we've just seen with the other extraction method. But carbon dioxide just uh, does cause global warming. So it still causes issues. At this point, I want to introduce another idea called reduction. And this simply means removing oxygen atoms or atom from an atom bonded with oxygen. Uh, you can say that it's an element bonded with oxygen in a compound. For example here, copper oxide is a compound and that copper is bonded with oxygen. So remo by removing that oxygen you're actually reducing the copper from copper oxide and that's how it's described and that type of chemical reaction where you actually remove the oxygen atom from an element is called reduction. We have seen how copper can be produced by smelting process by just heating copper sulfide and from copper carbonate by heating and then uh, taking copper oxide heating it strongly with carbon then copper oxide getting reduced to copper but both these methods produce impure copper which are not very useful to make many things particularly um, electrical cables uh, so that has to be purified uh, into very pure copper and that's done by electrolysis by just simply passing an electrical current. This is done uh, as a huge industrial process but what you see here is just a model of how the process works. Now as you can see here copper, impure copper is made into the positive electrode here. It is connected to the positive side of the battery. 
whereas the negative electrode is made up of pure copper uh, which is nearly 100% copper is made in, as an electric uh, negative electrode which is connected to the negative end of the battery so that is the setup now what we need to understand is this copper sulfate solution already contains copper plus two ions and sulfate ions SO4 minus two ions this is a sulfate ion and that's a copper positive ion uh, what happens is when the uh, electrolytic cell is switched on these copper ions actually move towards the negative electrode because they are attracted the positive uh, ions positive copper ions are attracted to the negative ion obviously but the copper which is here in the positive electrode keeps going into the solution as copper 2 plus leaving two electrons behind on the rod and that electron flows around um, and to the negative electrode or you don't need to know all the details of how this works all you need to know is that the copper plus ion in the solution the positive ion is attracted to the negative ion and how the electrodes are connected the positive electrode remember it's made up of the impure copper rod and uh, which is produced from the extraction methods as we saw earlier the negative electrode is made up of the pure copper made up of pure copper where the copper ions go and deposit so at the end of this process what you get is this growing and increasing in size and mass this slowly decreasing because as the copper ions are leaving this will lose mass copper leaves this copper ion and it keeps on going until uh, the process ends at the end of the process you will have pretty much nothing left here all the copper would have migrated here so what happens to the impurities the, the impurities actually gather just below where the impure copper rod is just over here okay so they don't reach here so all, all that ends up in this negative electrode is the pure copper ions the impurities do not move away from here and it's called anode mud which stays here so for all you have to understand is in this pro whole process the copper ions which are positive moves to the negative electrode because they are oppositely charged and they are attracted to each other and as this happens more copper ions move from the impure positive electrode into the solution so any any movement here is replaced by the movement from the positive electrode into the solution one last thing it's about the equations but you do not have to know this but i think it helps to understand what goes on here the copper ions go here and become copper metal and this is how it happens the copper ions gain two electrons to become copper metal and that happens at the negative electrode over here over here in the positive electrode copper ion loses two electrons to become copper ions and that's what happens here the copper metal going into the solution as copper ions you should be glad to know now that is the end of extracting copper video and in the next um, video lesson we can be look we will be looking at iron extraction iron and steel and in another one we'll be looking at how we can extract copper from low grade ore.